Welcome. We are so glad that you could join us for our Easter worship service celebrating our victorious resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. With that, we'll go right into our Easter acclamation. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. To him who sits upon the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. The Lord is risen. Christ is risen, alleluia. He is risen indeed, alleluia. Christ is risen, alleluia. He is risen indeed, alleluia. He is risen indeed, alleluia. We join in singing our opening hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. O most merciful God, since you have given your only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy on us, and for his sake grant us forgiveness of all of our sins. And by your Holy Spirit, Increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will and true obedience to your word to the end that by your grace we may come to everlasting life 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy on us and has given his only Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe on his name, he gives the power to become the children of God and has promised his Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, to us all. Amen. Amen. We join in singing our hymn of praise, Christ the Lord is risen today. Let us pray. Almighty God, the Father, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome death and opened the gate of everlasting life to us. Grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of our Lord's resurrection may be rescued from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading for this, the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, comes from Jeremiah chapter 31. At that time, declares the Lord, I will be the God of all the clans of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus says the Lord, the people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness. When Israel sought for rest, the Lord appeared to him from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. Again, I will build you, and you shall be built, O virgin Israel. Again, you shall adorn yourself with tambourines and shall go forth in the dance of the merrymakers. Again, you shall plant vineyards on the mountains of Samaria. The planters shall plant and shall enjoy the fruit. For there shall be a day when watchmen will call in the hill country of Ephraim. Arise, and let us go up to Zion, to the Lord our God. Our epistle reading for today comes from Colossians chapter three. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. 
For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. We continue by singing our next hymn, Good Christian Friends Rejoice and Sing. Christian friends rejoice and sing, now is the triumph of our King. To all the world glad news we bring. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord of Life is written to stay, bring flowers of song to strew his way. Let all the world rejoice and say, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Praise we in song. uplifted high. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Your name we bless, O risen Lord, and sing today with one accord. The life laid down restored. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Our Easter gospel comes from Matthew's gospel, chapter 28. <clears throat> now after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. For he has risen as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell the disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We now confess our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. 
and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We continue by singing our next hymn, Lamb of God, Pure and Holy.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for our meditation comes from John chapter 20, these words. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. This is our text, dear friends in Christ. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Lamb of God, pure and holy, has been our theme song throughout the 40 days of Lent. But we don't move on to better things now that we've moved from our Lenten fast to our Easter feast. For there's nothing better than the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. We see him in our text, fresh from the grave on that first Easter day, with the marks of death still visible in his hands and in his side. Peace be with you, he says to his incredulous disciples, and so it was. Jesus gave them peace then and there that day while they were in that locked room. And then he sent them forth to breathe out the Spirit's breath upon the church in the proclamation of the, of the forgiveness of sins that he earned for all of us upon the cross. And so now we have come full circle. We begin this season pondering the pure and holy Lamb of God, the victim of our sin. And today we see Jesus, the risen victor over death and hell. But he still remains the Lamb of God who bears our sins away. Today it's as he said that first Easter evening, peace be with you. Christ's enduring legacy is peace, the kind of peace that surpasses all human understanding and that lasts throughout all of the stresses and the storms of life, especially as we are dealing with this pandemic, this coronavirus. The peace surpasses that all understanding and will see us through that valley of the shadow of death and take us home to heaven to be with him forever, where we too will stand before the Father's throne, righteous and pure. The Lamb of God gives us peace indeed, a lasting peace. That's why the feast of Easter is extended. Easter day continues long after the, the sugary chocolate treats have been consumed, you know, all of those chocolate Easter bunnies that we eat and those, the chocolate and peanut butter Reese's eggs and yeah, even those little, little tiny peeps. It, Easter day continues after all of that stuff's gone and it continues on after all the little fluffy stuffed rabbits and little chicken toys and, and, and uh, even those little plastic eggs that we use for Easter after all of those have been put away for a another year. Our Lord Jesus Christ is not dead and gone, some departed hero. Instead, he lives on forever at the very right hand of God, his heavenly Father, and he lives and reigns to all eternity as the head over his church and over all things. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ shall come again. The very same Lord who was put to death for your sins and my sins has been raised for our justification and will come again in all glory and splendor to claim his bride, the church itself. Therefore, we Christians remain faithful to Jesus even though we cannot see him now. And even though we've never ever seen him, yet we love him and we believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible joy. For in the precious word of God, we continually receive the goal of our faith, namely the salvation of our souls. No wonder the Easter festival continues on. All the Sundays from now until Ascension Day are not labeled Sundays after Easter, but are labeled Sundays of Easter. Throughout the Easter season, we celebrate with undiminished joy, which is a good thing because God knows that there is so much out there in the world that would rob us of our joy these days. Fear and uncertainty grips the world and it grips our nation. It grips all of the nations of the earth, especially as we deal with this coronavirus and all of the stress and strain it's causing on people and their families and even on the medical field. 
And yes, we know that some have even died from that. But it, it, the illnesses and the hardship that we, we experience now and the, and the distress of body, mind, and soul, all these things, they can rob us of our inner peace and joy. The evening of that first Easter day was like this when Jesus came and he stood among his, his disciples with this astounding blessing. The doors were actually locked because they were in fear, fear of the Jews. But Jesus comes there and enters into that room anyway to speak his words of life and hope. Peace be with you, he said to them. Standing before those disciples in that locked room was the Lamb of God in living flesh who takes our sins away. The Lamb of God who died so that you and I could live. But Christ was dead no more. The visible marks of death, they were engraved upon his living flesh. It was no figment of the disciples' imaginations that stood there in front of them, right in front of them in that locked room. None other than the incarnate Son of God embodied in human flesh stood in that locked room alive and well with his disciples. The Lamb of God who takes away our sins of the world was now the Lamb of God who gives us peace. And that is exactly what he did. He came and preached peace to his disciples. Peace be with you, he said. Jesus wasn't merely extending some kind of greeting or extending a wish or a prayer to them. What Jesus said, he actually did. With the very words he spoke, he gave peace to his disciples gathered in that room and bestowed upon them the cessation of all hostilities between God and man. It was a spiritual ceasefire, if you will, a ratification of the peace treaty first established at the cross when Jesus breathed his last, commending his soul to God and then calling out in triumph, it is finished. The great spiritual battle between God and man is done and is over. Peace has been won for all of us. Sin is now defeated. The grave can no longer hold anyone. Hell has lost all of its power to destroy. Life has triumphed over death. The sting of death is gone, for all sin has been removed in Christ the Lamb of God who gives us peace. Death can never separate us from the love of God. Now there is a Sabbath rest for all the people of God. Each time we hear the life-giving word of the gospel of Jesus Christ, we have his life within us. By grace through faith, we receive the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit and of, through the, these means of grace and the benefits of all of Christ's saving work. Peace be with you. We hear these words of Jesus today. Here, hearts are restored. Sins are forgiving. Lives are renewed in Jesus' name. And although we live daily and breathe on this battlefield of life, the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ continues to come to us and bring us peace within. This is our shield and our protection, our bulwark and defense against all that threatens us. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, says our risen Lord. I do not give to you as the world gives. That's where you and I come in. Left to ourselves in this world, we would have no peace. Left to ourselves, we have not only worry and fear to contend with, but also hurt and loss, coupled with a, with a good dose of shame and guilt to top everything off. Left to ourselves, we'd be a mess. But we are not left to ourselves. We are not alone. The Lord Jesus Christ, the risen victor over sin and death, has given his church on earth his living and abiding peace. This peace is dispensed and distributed through the preaching of the gospel of Jesus. And then there is peace once more. For in the forgiveness of our sins for Jesus' sake, there is peace for every child of God by grace through faith. Paul tells us in Ephesians 2 that Jesus came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access to the Father by one spirit. So peace to you this Easter day, 
the peace of Christ that surpasses all understanding. For Jesus means exactly what he says and he gives precisely what he means. The peace of the Lord is with you always. To this we add our glad, amen. Thy peace be with us, O Jesus. Amen. And now may that peace of God which goes beyond all human understanding keep our hearts and minds in true faith in our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. At this time, we again remind you the great gift that our Lord and Savior gave to us, the, the, the sacrifice of his death on the cross and then his victorious resurrection. And we, in turn, respond with our gifts back to him to continue the ministry and work of the Lord here at Mount Olive. We remind you that you can mail in your offerings or drop them by the church. We pray. O risen Savior, set free our tongues to confess your resurrection before a world still captive to sin and death. Give us courage to go to every place and to speak in every language the salvation won for us upon the cross and the hope granted to us of life that death cannot ever overcome. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O risen Savior, Make us to burn with the fire of your love, that we may love you above all things and love our neighbors as ourselves. Deliver us from fear and relieve the anxiety of our hearts, that we may live out fully the hope planted within us and the new lives we received in the waters of our baptism. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O risen Savior, anoint the words of those who preach to us your gospel and open our ears to hear with faith all that he has done to save us. Raise up many who will serve you in the various callings of your church and who will serve us in your name with your word and gifts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O risen Savior, hear us on behalf of our president, our governor, the Congress of the United States, and all state and local elected officials. Guide them according to your word that their labors for our nation's health and welfare may not be in vain nor forgetful of the vulnerable, aging, and unemployed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O risen Savior, life is difficult and has become more difficult and hard and uncertain during these times that we have had to deal with this coronavirus. There seems to be so much frustration, pain, hurt, and heartache that surrounds us everywhere. And yet knowing this, you still willingly gave up your life and became Emmanuel, God with us, and our God who rescues us. We thank and praise you for doing that for us. Because of your sacrifice on the cross, Jesus, by grace through faith we will spend eternity with you. There is no pain you cannot conquer, no hurt you cannot heal, and no life you cannot transform. Your suffering, death, and resurrection from the grave prove that nothing is impossible for you and that we are more than conquerors because of you. Today and every day, Lord Jesus, help us to fix our hearts, eyes, and our minds on you. Bless us every day with more of your joy, hope, and peace as we continue to deal with the effects of this virus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O risen Savior, hear us on behalf of those who cry to you in any need, especially the sick, the suffering, the disabled, the wounded in spirit, those who suffer any other illness, and those in their last days. Give them grace according to their need, and sustain them in their afflictions to the day when their suffering will be exchanged for glory in the life to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O risen Savior, accept the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving from our lips and the tithes and offerings we give to you this day. Increase in the hearts of your people delight in your mercy, gratitude for all your benefits, and eagerness to support the mission and work of your church in word and deed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All praise to you, dear Father in heaven. For you have opened up to us the way to eternal life and the resurrection of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. We give you thanks for all those who have gone before us in the faith and now rest from their labors. 
Keep us in the same faith and embolden us by your resurrection to be fearless in the face of disease, chaos, loneliness, and every sorrow of this world. Give us with Job the solemn expectation to cheer us. Our Redeemer lives, and we too shall be resurrected and glorified to live with him in his eternal kingdom. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue by singing our next hymn, This Easter Celebration. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory 
forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. We close by singing our last hymn, I Know That My Redeemer Lives. Oh.
sweet joy, this is.